Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about your pick my book selection for the month of July. That was The Marriage Pack by Michelle Richmond. So this is a thriller. I'm trying to decide what kind of thriller because the story is about a married couple who are invited to join the marriage pact. The marriage pact is pretty much like a secret society exclusive to invited couples and exists to enhance or ensure the longevity of a marriage. There's a whole bunch of rules. There's dire consequences for not following those rules. So obviously this story has a lot of domestic elements. It's about marriage. It's about couples. It's about what a husband and wife do with each other, to each other, whether that leads to success or leads to failure. However, on the other hand, it is primarily about this pact that motivates or tries to control husbands and wives through fear of consequences. So in that regard, it's sort of a psychological thriller. At the same time, reading this book, the tone, the pacing, the subject matter, all of it sort of has this techno thriller kind of vibe. So think about reading like Dark Matter by Blake Crouch or the one by John Mars. There's, there's an element to it that's slightly unrealistic existing within this fast paced thriller suspense extravaganza. <laughs> Our story follows Jake and Alice, a newlywed couple, and it's told entirely from Jake's perspective. Jake is a great narrator. I really liked him as a character, as well as his voice. For a third or so of the book, it's told in flashback, kind of like a let me catch you up to this point sort of way. And then we catch up and it proceeds to the climax. So I really liked the narrator. I really liked the structure. I really liked the pacing of this book. It was suspenseful. It was fast paced. The chapters are very short and bursty, which I particularly enjoy. If I had any structural complaint or writing complaint, I would say it might be a tad bit too long that maybe some of the things in this book could have been cut. But all in all, um, it was a very engaging story that, you know, I, I stayed interested in all the way throughout. And I definitely wanted to know what happened to these people. Jake and Alice are very likable. And that's unusual. <laughs> uh, most of the thrillers I read don't deal with very happy couples. So it was refreshing to see happily married man and woman who are in it together, who are definitely feeling the weirdness of this situation. They're definitely realizing that they're not going to be able to walk away. Uh, they're trapped. And part of this book, at least, is how they're going to work together to free themselves from this situation that they've placed themselves in. Jake is a marriage counselor, so it would seem that maybe he's less in need of something like the pact. He probably doesn't. He probably has a pretty good idea of what makes a happy relationship and doesn't need or thinks he knows better than these people ruling their relationship from above. Alice is a former musician turned entertainment lawyer. So she has a lot of knowledge as well. Both of them were very richly developed. Alice more so than Jake, I think, because all of the action was seen through Jake's eyes. Like the story is being told through Jake's eyes. Naturally, he's telling us more about Alice than he's necessarily telling us about himself. And I think that says a lot 
about him as a character as well. There's deception in the book. There is de this this book goes pretty far. Like you're already a little bit nervous going into it, knowing that this couple is going to be subjected to authority that I don't think any of us are really comfortable with as human beings. And so you're already uncomfortable. But then when things start piling on and people start even accusing these two of things they haven't done and uh, I mean they're imprisoned and they're tortured and they're you know it just keeps going further and further and you're like holy crap like what uh how far are we gonna go here I will say that the ending it wasn't a disappointment uh really but it was a little, um, what is the word I'm looking for? I mean, you, you already have a story that's kind of unbelievable. It's not unrealistic, but you do have to suspend disbelief for a little bit and imagine like someone getting themselves into something like this, even though it definitely isn't something that takes place every day that we know about. To me, the ending came out of left field. I think that's what I want to say. Like of all the ways that I saw this ending, this particular ending came from nowhere. And I don't feel like anything in the book really rolled out the red carpet for this particular ending. I could have, I easily imagined it going a hundred different ways. And so I was surprised by the ending, not necessarily in a good way. I think that I had thought of a couple of better endings in my head while I was reading the book. And so it was a little bit of a letdown ending, but definitely not something that uh, infuriated me. I'm not mad at the ending. I think that I got the resolution that I needed. You know, there was anticipation and a little bit of suspense right up to the end. Our characters have some very big decisions to make. I mean, I give this four stars, and I'm actually really happy to be able to say that. <laughs> this book didn't let me down. Instead, I feel like I was pleasantly surprised by this book. I think that I could recommend this book to people who do like techno thrillers, psychological thrillers, or suspense. It has an institutional feeling to it at times. Um, it's sinister at times, you know, you're dealing with villains who have money and power and they're trying to control the characters. And it's an example of the kinds of thrillers that I like and prefer to read. Ones that are in the moment, thrillers that still have something very much at stake while you're reading the book. Your characters are not safe. In The Marriage Pact, these characters are not safe. They're far, far, far from safe. They are in physical danger, uh, financial danger, psychological danger the whole time. It's probably a pretty underrated book. I don't know. Let me see. Let's see how my opinions compare to other opinions. So it has a 3.62 average rating on Goodreads with over 15,000 ratings. There's a couple of people that I follow or are friends with on Goodreads who have read it. Both of them gave it four stars as well. I have to rant for a second. I cannot stand it when a review completely goes through the entire synopsis of a book. Like, stop. We can, like, stop. Oh my gosh. Larry. I see a couple of two-star reviews. I haven't come across a one-star review yet. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Um... <laughs> okay, this is literally... I don't know who you are, uh, Kristen, but uh, holy shit, you're hilarious. Okay, so Kristen shelved this book in suspense, in You're in a Cult, Call Your Dad. <laughs> Domestic Thriller Noir, uh, I Can't Even With This, Kinda Shitty, uh, This Sucks, I Don't Care, Fight Me. <laughs> she gave the book two stars. She s describes the opening hook as the worst marriage present of all time. Uh, the main characters as met and married at first sight, apparently. The plot twistiness as Tom Cruise jumping on a, 
Tom Cruise jumping on a couch like levels. I didn't think about it when I was reading it, but it does have some Scientology like vibes where, you know, there are, there's, it's expected a strict adherence to the rules is expected. And when you don't, what happens to you is kind of under wraps and, um, but it's not good. (laughs) Back to, I got derailed by that entirely hilarious review, but on Goodreads, I see mostly two to four star reviews. So it's a pretty middle of the road, giving it its 3.6 average rating. It's not a polarizing book where people either think it's five stars or one star. Everybody is kind of on the same page with a few people liking it more than others. I don't really have any major complaints. Like I said, the ending is a little contrived maybe or just out of left field. I just can't. I'm shocked at where the ending went. I wish it had gone a different way, even if that meant it turned out differently for our main characters. Uh, I don't know anything about this author. I'd never heard of this author prior to this book. According to Goodreads, she's got at least four other books out there, four or five. So they don't look anything like the Marriage Pact by cover, but I didn't open them and read any of the descriptions. So I have to thank you. Like, thank you for choosing the Marriage Pact. This was an entertaining read. And I had a good time. If you have any questions about it or if you have already read it and you want to give me your thoughts, leave that stuff for me in the comment section down below. I wanted to do a joint review with the Kindle Roulette book that I picked this month. I think it was called The Four Week Fiance. I can't even recall. Um, I haven't read it yet, though, and I wanted to get this up sooner rather than later. I hate making you guys wait for these things. So I do still have my Kindle roulette book to read and we're closing it on at the end of the month, but I should be able to knock that out. That's where, that's the status of that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching you guys and I will see you all very soon.